Hello, I'm David Anderson, and this is a web posted lecture in partial completion of Advanced Data and Computer Architecture at Strayer University. Zachman's framework for information system architecture was first proposed in 1987 and later extended in 1992. It is a widely used approach for developing and or documenting an enterprise-wide information system architecture. Zachman based his framework on practices in traditional architecture and in engineering. This resulted into an approach which on the vertical axis provides multiple perspectives of the overall architecture and on the horizontal axis a classification of the various artifacts of the architecture. The framework can be viewed as a tool to organize any form of metadata for the enterprise. The columns have no order of priority or sequence and the order of columns in the framework is arbitrary. But by keeping of things in this order, it makes the framework easier to read and to reference. Each column has a simple basic model used to describe a portion of the enterprise and its information systems architecture. These models are not independent, rather they are interdependent and also interact continuously. A change in one column affects one or more other columns. Each row represents a distinct, unique perspective associated with a participant or group of participants in information systems planning, development, and using. All six dimensions are needed to fully represent each perspective. The composite or integration of a cell model in one row constitutes a complete model from the perspective of that row. The scope or ballpark view. This is a definition of the enterprise direction and business purpose. This is an industry view. This, it is connected with the things that define, that define the nature and purpose of the business. The model of the business, which is also known as the owner's view, this defines the nature of the business, including its structure, functions, and organization. There is the model of information system. This is also known as the architect's view. This defines the business, this defines the business described in step two, but in more detailed terms. Where row two describes business functions, row three describes them specifically as transformations of data. Where row two described all things of interest to the enterprise, row three describes those things about which the organization wishes to collect and maintain along with now describing that information. The technology model also known as the designer's view. This describes how technology may be used to address the information processing needs. Here, relational databases are chosen over network ones. The kinds of languages are selected and program structures are now here defined. Detailed representations, or the builder's view. This is a view of the program listings, database specifications, networks that constitute a particular system. These are all expressed in terms of particular languages. The functioning system. Finally, here is a system that is implemented and made part of the organization. <clears throat> the data. Each of the rows in this column addresses the understanding of and dealing with an enterprise's data. This begins with a list of the things that concern any company in this industry. As we pass through the rows, we move to progressively more rigorous descriptions of the data. There is the business person's view, and then there is a discipline translation of this. Then in row four, there is a specific design approach and a specific database management system is specified here. Row five has the detailed representation of the data, and row six is now a working database. The function. Now, the rows in the function column describe the process of translating the mission of the enterprise into successfully more detailed definitions. Row 1 is a list of the kinds of activities the enterprise conducts. Row 2 describes these activities in a contiguous model. Row 3 portrays them in terms of data transforming process. The technology model in row 4 then converts these data conversion processes into the definition of program modules. Row 5 then converts these into source and object code. Row 6 is where the code is linked and converted to executable programs. The network column is concerned with the geographical distribution of the enterprise's activities, where things are going. At the strategic level, this is the listing of the places where the enterprise does business. 
At row two, this becomes a more detailed communication chart describing how the various locations interact with each other. Row three produces the architecture for data distribution. In row four, this distribution is translated into the kinds of computer facilities that are now required at each location. Now in row five, these facility requirements are translated into specifications. Row six now describes the implemented communication facilities. The people. The fourth column describes who is involved in the business and the introduction of new technology. The model of the people is, simple, is a simple list of the organizational units and each unit's mission. This list is formed into a full organizational chart. Here also requirements for, requirements for security are described in general terms. In row three, the potential interaction between people and technology begins to be specified, specifically in terms of who needs what. In row four, the actual interface between each person and the technology is designed. In row five, this design is converted into the outward appearance of each program, as well as the definition of access and permissions. In row six, you now have a trained people, trained group, using the system. The time, the fifth column. This describes the, effort, the effects of time on the enterprise. It is difficult to describe or address this column in isolation from the others. At the strategic level, this is a description of the business cycle and overall business events. The time column defines when functions are to happen and under what circumstances. Row 3 defines the business events which cause specific data transformation. With row 4, the events become program triggers and the messages and the information processing responses are designed in detail. In row 5, these designs become specific programs. In row 6, business events are correctly responded to now by the system. The motivation. As Mr. Zachman originally described in this column, it is concerned with the translation of business goals and the strategies into specific ends and means. This can be expanded to include the entire set of constraints that apply to the enterprise's efforts. The enterprise identifies its goals and strategies in general common language terms. Then there are <clears throat> these are then translated into specific rules and constraints that apply to an enterprise's organization. This includes constraints on the creation of rows in a database as well as the updating of specific values. These business rules will be converted to the program design elements <clears throat> and in row 5 they will become specific programs. Finally, in row 6 the business rules are now able to be enforced. Well, I want to thank you for this online posted lecture. I certainly hope you find it informative. Thank you again.